So it's now um, the beginning of March in 2017 and we're into the final phase of building EDSAC. As you can see, the arithmetic unit is now here. That was commissioned in Cambridge by Nigel Benet. He's now wiring it into the main machine. The only parts we're missing are the input-output system. We don't need that until the end. Peter lindleton has been working on the delay line store. The time has now come to put the individual pizza boxes, as we call them, that contain the delay lines into the wooden boxes that mimic the EDSAC coffins that held the mercury delay lines. The main store units, of which this is an example, uh, come in two sizes. These contain quite small lengths of delay line. This is just a little piece of delay line holding 36 bits of data used to provide storage registers for the internal working of the machine. Um, and we're currently having fabricated the, uh, the boxes for the long ones that form the main memory, um, which are something like twice the size of this, and other ones which fit into the rack that um, is placed inside the coffin. Inside the wooden boxes, we start off by putting a series of longitudinal rails that run the whole length of the box, top and bottom, uh, front and back, and then these subframes bolt to those rails top and bottom so that all the metal work is bonded together. Um, four or five boxes then slide in from the end and are plugged together to uh, provide the store of the machine. Our hope is we'll have everything integrated by the late summer of this year and that the machine will be able to start running programs at that point. There will be a lot more to do to complete the replica but that will be a major milestone for us. To monitor progress at this stage of the project, the volunteers get together about every month to six weeks and swap notes on how they're doing at connecting the various systems together. Those meetings are quite technical. I am working on the clock monitor unit, um, although you haven't seen much evidence of it, but here is evidence that I am working on it, and that wasn't set up. It's been like that for months. Could be anything. Yeah. We may not have agreed it, but what it will be... <laughs> is both the chassis one pulse and the clock pulse superimposed in some way. They may be oared together so that you will see four edges. Quite often we find that signals aren't at the right voltage or the shape of pulses aren't triggering things properly and decisions have to be taken about well, how those problems are resolved. Who has to improve their circuit in other words? The breaking news this week, obviously, I'm sure you've all seen, is the back row of the machine is now full. But um, we disconnected and delivered Nigel's arithmetic unit, and uh, hopefully that will all wire up and behave itself. Well, uh, I got various, I posted on Facebook some pictures of it at the back of my car and got all kinds of amusing comments from friends and colleagues on the <laughs> automatic cars. And I bet the EDSAC designers didn't think that they would do it, design driverless cars. <laughs> so, to give you a taste of those discussions, we're following this short segment with a recording of one of those meetings unedited so you can see the level of discussion and the kind of detail that the volunteers in the project have to know to understand the system. <laughs>